did judge it too fast but my name's Toya RBG because RBG stands for red, black, stands for red, black and green. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, All right. And I adopted that name, I'd say mid, um, I'd say early last year when I really, when the liberation road really kind of just took, took me over. I even made a new Facebook account, got rid of the old work on all the European friends on it. Not <laughs> nice. But you know, I just thought it's time. To, but I've got nothing to hide, but I just thought, you know, I don't want to know. Yeah, so we have to just separate it. So that's why I became um, Toya RBG. Um, and uh, again, that's because I read, well, uh, I'll explain as I go along. So I just want to say thank you for our Blue Land Re Revivalist Movement for um, inviting me along and just another hand up. It's for me, um, it's, thank you for working with me. So, <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. But okay, anyway. So, to begin with, just a little bit about myself. So I'm Toy, I'm a Pan-African community activist, I call myself, and a reparations campaigner. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm currently working on the reparations march that's happening um, annually, it's the third year this year, um, so I more promote uh, grassroots activism and I try and cross the boundaries with more academia and things like that, so when there's like conferences on and stuff like that, I try and try to go there so the grassroots people can get their voices heard sometimes, mm -hmm. you get the academia, they will come and, you know, a lot of them as well, people that aren't Africans as well, think they can like study on us and go to places and do these conversations where I'm, I feel like I'm the investigator, I kind of go there and think, uh, actually, um, so, <laughs> just to kind of give a little uh, reason of what motivates me. So what motivates me to do what I'm doing is definitely my ancestors and the journey that they've endured um, on the global scale. So it's not just a small scale. Like when, as I read more and more about certain things, I just I just couldn't believe what was happening. Uh, what, what, I couldn't believe the world I was living in, like the whole mm -hmm. the reawakening that mm -hmm. I had like two years mm -hmm. ago, the beginning of 2013. Um, and with that, I just, I just thought, nah, something's got to be done. And this is why I really embraced the reparations because it encompassed everything that I was feeling. And I didn't, when I felt this way, I didn't even know there was a word that encompassed yeah. all my feelings. So when I realised this word, this word reparations is about, I was like, what kind of thing? I just, it was just, it was just. That's exactly how I feel. Reparations. Um, so. Also, it's the legacy. You know, the legacy that we're living in today, the, the present day effects of what's happened to us that keeps the fire ignited in me and literally up until two days ago I've got a friend whose partner you know she she wants to wear a natural hair in the summer and with that and he's saying oh she shouldn't and just that's how ridiculous things are mm -hmm. in the present day so a lot of time people think yeah. oh it's in the past and blah 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 it's like oh please like don't start I've got a whole scroll of how it's bad. Don't tell me it's in the past and I've got my friend's boyfriend trying to tell her she must continue wearing European hair. Yeah, that's a lame example but there's ones that are worse than yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah. So also um, just the, what I love about the, uh, the liberation movement as a whole are the how you can take control and take everything into your own hands because yeah. When I was younger, I was like, oh, I want to be a teacher, oh, I want to be a radio presenter, oh, I want to be this, oh, I want to be a journalist. And being in a uh, liberation room, I've become all of those things encompassing one <laughs> without anybody's uh, approval. I don't need no one's certificate to say, oh, yes, you can be a radio presenter or you can be a teacher. I, I, I am just one. I'm learning, learning, but you know, I feel like I'm a teacher and I feel like I'm, everything I've ever wanted to be, I've, I've become in this world. So I think that's, that was a nice awakening as well. Um, also, the defining the world for ourselves, I think um, a lot of people, because of the conditioning we have, we, we forget that we have our own minds and even from, even, okay, another example, my sister said, oh, was, you know, she wore a jacket, she goes, oh, she thinks it's too long or something, I'm thinking, well, says who, like, for example, some rubbish example, but just little things like, you know, if my friend, do you know, when she, yeah, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> so, um, other things that motivate me, just looking at my name, like my, my, my slave name is Smith, and it was always a name that I've always kind of frowned upon. And you know, when you round a lot of Europeans, they make you know that your name shouldn't be Smith, mm. um, even to the point where I think what really kind of knocked me in time was when I was getting my boiler fixed, you know, I was obviously head tie on, you know, wake up in the morning, and an you know, English man came in when I signed the the school he was like oh you can't be a smith and i was like have you got all day and i'll tell you why i'm a smith you know <laughs> <laughs> i said to 
question. We obviously don't know your own history. Why are you questioning? Like, oh, it was just, I just couldn't believe it. So that was another like slap in the face. You're always reminded here and there at work, when you're at work, sometimes they come up with their silly questions. And I started wearing my hair a bit more. When I started wearing my natural hair, I was like, oh, what happened to your hair? And it's just like, oh, but don't worry, my answer's up. Assertive but educational at the same time. So you might get a bit offended, but it's the true facts of that. Um, another thing that motivates me is the, the contemporary injustices that I've said, uh, the Ma'anga Mizi, which is uh, chattel enslavement, uh, colonial and neo-colonial enslavement, so it's like it encompasses all, the African head of course we call it, um, that's by a, a, a professor called Karenga, he came up with that word. Um, and also what motivates me is the survival, just the, the mere fact that we have to survive and the, the denial that's out there, you know, the, the people are so, even now, I still get wrapped up in these silly little debates. I know I'm just, I should just leave them alone, but I just have to get in there, you know, because certain times you listen to things like LBC and you hear the black Ooh. people on there, and it's like, oh, don't do that. Right. <laughs> you know, it's a bit, a bit like, God, like, we need to educate more people to phone in and challenge these people, you know, I can't do it on my own. So, just things like that really, just really just winds me up, even though I've calmed down a little more, believe me, believe me with that. Um, so my purpose is actively seeking justice um, while re-educating uh, the masses. So that's my number one uh, priority, re-education, de-brainwashing, re-educating, uh, even to the point where I've got my nephews and nieces and small cousins trying to come around at least once a month if they can fit, you know, if they can work and just try and teach them a few things. Um, it's taking responsibility to change the global mindset. Um, Another saying that I hear that I love to hear is the struggle was here before you and it will be here after you. You just you have to just contribute where you can. I need to find out who said that, but that's my favourite saying. But a lot of people think, oh, it's finished, it's over. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you've got no right to sit down. You know, our ancestors didn't. So mm -hmm. um, uh, also for me personally, I don't think there's nothing worth living for or dying for apart from trying to liberate our people. And it's going to be a soulless puppet, I call, I call them. Or surface dweller. Well, I'm a bit soft with the new with the newcomers. Cause I was newcomer as well at one point, but you know you you hear a few things, you just kind of think, oh gosh, you know, what what else would you want to live for? If you're not living for this, then you're just existing. That's my point of view anyway. Uh, and the ancestors paved have paved the way for us, and I feel like it will be a weak, insensitive, and disrespectful to rest back on our laurels. Um, and we we should never forget that if it wasn't for the strength they endured and the original DNA. That we're most <laughs> we wouldn't be here today and we are the survival of the fittest and we need to just kind of keep uh, pushing that. Um, it's too much work to do to let it go one side and it's not in the case of I want to, it's that like, I have to do this, I have to do so. Even if I feel tired like now, the eyes are burning, I'm like, no, nah, 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 you know, it's just this fire, it just wakes, it just wakes me up. Well, I haven't finished, yeah, that's just my little introduction. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, just to add as well, just to know, with all the technology that's out there as well, I just think, come on, people. I know a normal person will go away from and think, oh, that liberation, let me look on the internet. They're not going to think that. But mm -hmm. it's just the kind of, just research, you know, stop, I just think people should stop relying on external sources and, you know, do your own research. Some people are so lazy, they don't want to read anymore. If you don't want to read, there's YouTube. Like, you know, I know it's other people's points of views and stuff, but yeah, anyway, so let's begin. Um, so. I just wanted to kind of go a little bit back in uh, back in a little bit back in uh, time because a lot of women, there's been a lot of women activists in the past. Um, some of them may have been silenced or uh, suppressed in some kind of way, but these are the ones that uh, I've researched and studied uh, quite thoroughly. You know, Olive Morris. I'm sure you know she's a, a very popular lady. You know? uh, Claudia Jones, Anna Pauline Murray. These are some names you probably jot down and have a look. Research, uh, and obviously, you know, uh, Dorothy Benton Lewis, Sojourner Truth, Queen Mother War, I did the world to Amy Ashford Garvey. So, there's some pictures there. I would have, I would have gone a bit more depth, I'm sure you know. Um, these are more present, present day activists that I've been inspired by. Um, there's a uh, Unity Dow, she's in the top right there. She's a judge and a human rights activist in Botswana. And why I really liked um, her and inspired by her because she was one of the three judges who decided. The internationally acclaimed, it says KGA, Kuga, Kuga Lagardi, their San, Bushmen, um, 
the court decision concerning the rights of the San people to return back to their ancestral land. So when I heard that, I thought, wow, she's really powerful and she had to say in, 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 in doing that. Um, but here's three sisters. Oh, I've done something. No worry, I'll say Sorry. The, love, the, the three ladies, stand by. Okay. The three ladies that were right, the, their names Alicia, Garza, Opal, Tometi, Patrice, Colors. They're the three ladies that um, founded the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, Sister Esther, Stanford Hoise, Jendai Serwa, Zita Holborn, Rosa Clemente, Mallorca Carter, Theo Nian. These are the, the last four, last five there from Rosa Clemente. These are like upcoming female activists as well that I've, um, that I've looked up as well. Um, so look out for them. They're American based, but you know, we have got to dig up some more Brit 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 British. British. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Um, yeah. Uh, this is my dad. Uh, I have to. I don't. Wow. We're about women, but I have to. I can't forget my dad because work for my dad. I don't think I have this this energy in me. I feel like I've got my, my dad's spirit inside this tiny body sometimes. Because I'm just like mm, now. I'm like mm, talk about it again. Um, I really got to be thankful to my dad because from when I was born, he's always been very very African. You know, he's even you know our middle names are African. He's been very very mm. African to the point where he's repatriated um, to. Gambia. Uh, I need to ask him why. Uh, why not in a? I, I'd love to know why he chose Gambia. He must have chosen Gambia for a reason. I know I asked him years ago, but I wasn't very kind of like interested then. You know, you're kind of wrapped up in everyday school life. You know, you know your dad saying, "Oh, Africa." You're thinking, "Oh, that man." You know what I mean? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, whatever kind of thing. So, but even though he used to talk about that all the time, I know in secondary school, even though I wasn't very clued up on my history, I remember still having this kind of. Like, like this, like that, like, I didn't you know what I was talking about, so that was like the seed that my dad planted, so um, I've really got to big him up with that. Um, so yeah, salute to him, he's so happy, honestly, I, I call him sometimes and I say, oh, Dad, what are you doing? You know, and he's like, oh, I'm just relaxing, so I'm thinking about, we've been doing that every day for like 12 years, like, <laughs> are you bored? He's like, bored of what? You know, so I really think that he's on a different, he's on a really different spiritual, mental level when it comes to living and breathing and... He's just a normal human being. He, my dad is like a, how a human being is supposed to be. In the sun, chilling, eating fruits, veg, with his family. So, bless him. Yes, daddy. So, so I have to mention Marcus Garvey definitely again and his wives, obviously. I can't forget the ladies, that bones. Right. Um, I have to mention Marcus Garvey because he, I feel like he was the one that really, after I read his book, Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, by page 60, I had my big A0 picture of Marcus Garvey on my wall. Like, well, I, I didn't have to finish the book. I finished the book, but the book was so powerful to me. I, it was like, it was speaking to me, so. I couldn't put the book down. I read it in like what, four days. I was so like, hooked on it, um, and I learned so much. And it was again. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't believe I was reading. It was, it was just a bit like um, all the every question I had about black people was in that book. Honestly, it was about because I was thinking I know something's not quite right with us, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And that book honestly opened my eyes to everything. I just couldn't believe that this book was here and I couldn't believe it's like almost 100 years old, you know, and it's just like, why are you still in this position? Mm -hmm. So that's when I felt like something's got to be done. Oh my gosh, I thought well, nothing's really, well, things have moved forward, but very, very, you know. So I was just think like, where, how comes this, how comes in present day, you know, back then he didn't have any technology or anything like that. And he managed to make such an impact and like, I just think, Gosh, we've got all this technology and everything. I said, oh my gosh, what, what are we all doing? I know there's a nice, they're, they're, we are out there, definitely. We're definitely out there. But um, obviously, the impact of Marcus Garvey had at that time, we know things were a bit more in your face, say, you know, hanging on trees and all that kind of stuff. So more people were probably like, oh my God, let's join the UNIA. But even now, we're still hanging on trees. You know, USA is still raping our Africa. So this, I still really respect. Always look up to Marcus Garvey and his wife, but, you know, Marcus Garvey, he, he, that's why I called myself Toy RPG as well. Um, also, I remember going through like a grieving stage as well, because when I think when you go through like a true reawakening, you've got to kind of shed off all the lies you were told, and then, you know, you, you 
it, like I said, the book kind of filled a void in me because I, I felt like I used to be quite angry a lot as a, as a little girl because I used to think, wow, I'm so angry. You know, as I, like that book kind of really gave me all my, um, all my answers. And like I said, um, all my emotions being divided into one word was reparations. Um, and yeah, so when I first kind of thought, well, oh, reparations, I saw a TV show and I thought, what, is that what it's called? Like, okay, reparations. Then I started the quest to look for certain things. I, I thought, oh, we've got to do something. You know, I've got to put on like an educational event. I need to tell everybody what I know. And you know, you think you're the only one. You first realise you kind of think you're the only one that knows this stuff. You know, and then you go on like, you, and then you go on Facebook or you talk to some people. Think, oh my gosh, you knew. So I know. <laughs> so then when I was, I remember going on Facebook and like thinking, oh, I really want to do something. I really want to do something about this. And I. I remember coming up across a flyer about a public meeting, which was about for the reparations march in 2014, and I felt like my answers, my answers had all come on this on this flyer on Facebook. I thought, wow, are they planning a reparations march. This is deep. Um, and also, what I liked about it as well, there was a public meeting, so we could come in and have our say. You know, a lot of the time when you hear. Um, institutions or organisations planning something huge like a march, you might feel a bit like, oh, maybe you're not good enough or maybe you're not qualified enough to be involved. But what I liked about that was that it was very open to everybody. Everyone could come in. I remember going to the public meeting, having my say, putting some um, signatures, going to work, having the, having the petition, everything like that. So um, so that was, uh, sorry, let me just change this. Yeah, so this is the 2014 march where I really felt that day, 1st of August 2014, I'd have to say, it was, I have to say probably one of the happiest days of my life so far. Because <laughs> yeah. I just felt the energy, man. I think I cried when I was marching as well. It was so deep, man. I remember afterwards going to Al uh, Alcabudo and Revivalist Movement mm -hmm. uh, then after the IMAP Movement, I was there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was amazing. It was a really, really, really amazing experience. Just And seeing how much people, you feel like, oh my God, there's so much like-minded people. You know, I remember it was the first, just kind of, just got involved. So it was so lovely to see. I'm not crazy. There's thousands of people that that feel the same way I do. So it's really nice. Right. Some more pictures. Yeah. Um, so with um, after the reparations march that happened, um, as I said, I felt like a whole new woman. So I think that's when I I didn't become Toyota <laughs> RBG until the beginning of 2015. But I really got into a lot of activism. So after the 2014 March, by September, um, I was really heavily involved with a, a campaign called the Human Zoo campaign. I don't know if you know Sarah Myers. Mm -hmm. She was a lady that um, challenged a South African artist, um, Brett Bailey, saying that, you know, he's dealing with art, but he didn't realise that he's actually <laughs> stepping on the toes of people's out of, of our ancestors. Okay. He's probably so used to doing it, he didn't realise to come and consult us first. So <laughs> Sarah Myers, she's another um, present day female activist as well, and we've been her up because we ended up shutting it down. I thought we should have some pictures, but, um, I mean pictures, but um, also met, uh, I crossed paths with Brother Shakara there and everything, so it's still nice to kind of come and still see brothers and sisters that I've seen from, from years ago. We're in it forever now. We're old and great. Still going to see each other. I'm going to talk again. What about time? I, I don't think it's you. I think it's I think, it's I think it is, but every time I do something, I think... <laughs> so, I have to say, we made history as well. I think, um, we made history of the Human Zoo campaign. I think it was the first time that um, a show put on by the Barbican had ever been shut down and things like that. Um, and also, I got an insight of how difficult it could well, difficult it can be to be um, an activist and getting challenging things that, especially when the whole world is already whitewashed in their in their mindset when it comes to certain things. And you're saying, hey, look, you know, obviously we're already invisible, we're already at the, bo the bottom to them. We don't mean anything to them. So when when people are mocking you and all this kind of stuff and. I, I saw how hard it was um, for Sarah Myers as well. We pulled through and it just made me think, oh, I'm even ready for you, even more. Um, after that, I did a bit more activism. Uh, I wouldn't say it was more, it, it was more to do with just standard injustice. There was a, a man, young man called Marcus Campbell. Um, this was in October and I think the NHS wasn't treating him. He, was, um, he had like a brain injury, he didn't treat him and then he caught two infections in the hospital and um, I think my friend told me, oh, Taya, because I don't even know the guy, but, you know, my friend called me and said, Taya, there's this um, 
there's this guy, they're not treating him, he's black. Uh, she didn't have to finish the sentence, I'm coming down. I'm going to the <laughs> with my loud hail, I think I even bought a loud hail and everything. And I'm, I think I was on the news about it as well. I think I was screaming, but literally I was screaming in the, because what it was, there was a mob, there was a big crowd of us outside and everyone was kind of ifing and butting outside. I think, what's everybody doing? Is everyone here to kind of chat up girls or boys? What's everyone doing? So I said, you know what? Look, come on, we're going up to the door. So um, I didn't even know, I think I met the sister after I was um, protesting, but in the end I made up this, uh, Chant and it was called Mayday Murderers. It was Mayday Hospital. So I was seeing the Mayday Murderers and all this kind of stuff. And the police came running trying to block the doors. I had like the loud hater in his face going, Mayday Murderers! Kind of thing. And in the end, they treated him. So, you know, that was good. I don't know if you're trying to story. If you try to contact them to find out has he come back round or anything, but they've not really updated uh, their, their, um, their campaign. So I hope he's okay. Um, also, what else, what else, what else? Um, sorry, excuse me, bear with. Um, so yeah, with my activism, so that's when I got more involved. I was, as I said, I was so inspired by the reparations march that I really wanted to get involved with it. So um, I managed to get in touch with uh, the organisers and stuff. I managed to sliver my way in to become the uh, secretary, so it was good. Um, and it's good because I really think that, you know, it's good that the, elder, the elders and the ones that's been in the liberation movement longer than us, they do give us a platform, they do say, look, you know, we want you to take the lead. So it's really, that's, that's it's really respectful, respectful of them. Um, so, um, and also, just uh, overall, I've been on some, I've been like, invited to things like being on a panellist after watching documentaries. There's one called The Price of Memory. I uh, can't remember the woman's name, I'm really sorry, but if you look up the price of memory on YouTube, it's this woman, this Jamaican journalist, and she speaks about the impact of slavery into present day in Jamaica as well. Once you type in the price of memory, um, her name will come up. Um, I was on a panelist for that. I've been on um, Vox Africa for a seven minute interview about reparations, that was good. Um, so yeah, so we'll move on. So moving on to um, what is reparations? So. I'd like to ask anybody in the audience what do they think reparations is? Anyone brave enough to answer? What do you think, you there in the stripy hoodie? <laughs> <laughs> I saw you missing looking up looking at me. <laughs> reparations, you have you heard of the word before? Yes, uh, I've I've heard the, the word before. But as the, the name suggests, repair. So it's compensation for all that they've done in order to uh, boost then our own repara rep um, reparations of our, our culture, our land, our people self. So whether that be monetary land, facilities, whatever it is, it all, it all adds up. Thank you, that was a very, very, I like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I've got like a, the, the correct answer. I always hear money and everything. Yeah, that's not the whole story, but thank you, brother. Yes, it's thank you. Repair, reparation. So internal and external repair. Um, so internal, obviously, our own our own kind of damage that we need to repair from ourselves, then extend that to our families, that will then be extended to the community, and then hopefully regionally, nationally, and internationally. Uh, okay, so. I like what uh, there's it's Chin Weizu. He's uh, at the first Pan African Conference on Reparations. Um, he read a paper called Reparations and a New Global Order. Um, uh, can I read it out? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know it's a bit long, and I can read it, but I really love it because I think that just encompasses what reparations is. So I think if you if you can get a copy of this quote, when people say, "Oh, it's about money," come back with this this definition because I can't <laughs> chat to you. Uh, so it goes, let me begin by noting that reparations is not just about money, it's not even mostly about money. In fact, money is not even 1% of what reparations is about. Reparations is mostly about making repairs, self-made repairs on ourselves, mental repairs, psychological repairs, cultural repairs, organisational repairs, social repairs, institutional repairs, technological repairs, economic repairs, political repairs, educational repairs, repairs of every type that we need in order to recreate and sustain uh, our African societies. But the sad truth is that five centuries of Holocaust have made our societies brittle and unviable. And as the great Marcus Garvey warned over 50 years ago, if we continue as we are, 
We are heading for extinction. More important than any monies to be received and more fundamental than any lands to be recovered is the opportunity the reparations campaign offers us for the rehabilitation of black people, by black people, for black people. Opportunities for the rehabilitation of our minds, our material condition, our collective reputation, our cultures, our memories, our self-respect, our religious, our political traditions, and our family institutions, but first and foremost, for the rehabilitations of our minds. So I think that's perfect, perfect, perfect. That's the definition of reparations. That should just be the dictionary. That should be the dictionary, that, 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 and that's it. <laughs> so, why is it important for African women to be involved in reparations? Obviously, not just African women, African men, African children, but African women. Um, my personal uh, reason is uh, because we come from our mothers, you know, um, and our mothers are our first teachers. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not not just because I, I kind of picked up my dad. You know, it's not that my mum wasn't. You know, I love my mum to death, obviously. But she was more oh about it, you know. So sometimes my mum goes, gosh, you know, about my dad. Oh, he's too much of this. He's too much of that. They're not together anymore, bless her. But I feel that if my mum was just like my dad, I would put would have been in the liberation road earlier. So that's why it's important for African women to be involved in reparations. Because mm, right. even though that was around, <laughs> when they went their separate ways, I was just more like, you know, I got like a weekend dose. But if mummy was doing it, I'd be, it would just be constant, constant, constant. So that's why it's important. Um, just to list some things, these are just a reminder, I'm sure we know already, of the current uh, of, of uh, the Mangamisa. So this is examples of the African Holocaust, um, and you'll be able to link up with these uh, examples of into present day. So like loss of identity, Smith, loss of name, Smith, <laughs> loss of family, nationhood and peoplehood. We're scattered everywhere. You know, um, I, I always focus on Africa in, in, in itself in, in its current form. You know, it's, just, it's not ours. It's, it, you know, it's been robbed and taken from us. We have no control over our continent or anything like that. Word, word. Um, and for example, you know, I always look at other nations and I say like Chinese people, like if a Chinese person, even if he was born in England, went on holiday somewhere else and he, something happened to him, like, you know, the Chinese government would be like, oh, oh, you look, well, that's one of our people, what are you doing, kind of thing. But because the, the reconnection has been so severed by, you know, the perpetrators, um, has been lost, you know, that, that whole kind of uh, claiming of, uh, of our motherland, what it is, and I think that's the most painful thing, um, that's one of the most painful things I think for myself. Um, compensated to the equivalent to 17 billion in 1833, and the, em the Emancipation Act legislation was passed, saying it was subhuman. Um, so what I don't like about that is what they're trying to say is from 1833 prior, we weren't human beings. So that's something that we need to be like, excuse me, <laughs> we need to change that. But anyway, whatever, we will move forward. Uh, the, pseud the pseudo-scientific theories, because I think a lot of people misunderstand, a lot of people just think we were just slaves, like, or we were enslaved, that's the correct term, we weren't slaves, we were right. people, we were families, yeah. we were people, so uh, we were enslaved, and a, a lot of the time when you have people um, trying to challenge you, these are the things you need to kind of be saying, not only were we enslaved and raped and we were pillaged and things like that, but we were actually like, experiments, pseudo-scientific theories, there's all the, it was a whole law against it, so people don't understand the magnitude. Um, so you think you're whining when you keep going on about it, but they don't understand the impact, and this is part of it. Um, so it funded the Industrial Revolution, that's another thing. Um, young children, you can tell your friends, they check rubbish to you. Um, the dehumanization and degradation, psychological trauma, mutilation and lynching. Um, colonialism, the rape and pillage of Africa, the robbery of land, uh, scramble for Africa from 1883, sorry, onwards. Um, the rewriting of the history, removing us from history and things like that. Um, so I just put reconnecting with our homeland. That's just an example of who owned where. Um, Belgium, Congo. Yeah, so one of this picture on the left here is the scramble for Africa 1818-1914. Not that I'm giving you a history lesson, I'm just trying to no, explain well, why well, reparations well, is so important. Well, um, so uh, there's the scramble of Africa on the top left. On the right, if you can see, it's got like a breakdown of which, which European countries have <laughs> sliced up our home. This is our home, everybody. They've, they've yeah. sliced it up, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Like, this is our place. And we're mm -hmm. here they dug up Africa and flung it. 
not yeah. here, you know. A lot of people think, oh, you're in England, what are you moaning about? And it's like, yeah, but what about the rest of us globally? You know, we're not satisfied with just our house and our car. You know, we want, we want more. We want more than that. We want back our sovereignty. So that's right. right. Yeah, we'll move on. Say, I'll move on. Go on with your car. Go, go away with your car. Yeah, I'm trying to rebuild this nation right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, neo colonialism. So, this is like present day contemporary effects of uh, enslavement. So, these are the things that if people tell you it's in the past, these are the things that you can say that the, it's, it's still here and this is like a smidgen of what's going on. So, Afrophobia, you know, the fact that I think I gave the example of uh, my friends boyfriend saying, oh, you know, shit with your hair like that. And it's like, oh, is that why you cut your hair? I don't know. Um, debt bondage, you know, our Caribbean islands and Africa, you know, we owe this debt. So this is such a, this is, that's, that's another thing when I, when I, when I was uh, motivating me to kind of really, because people think, what, uh, how insulting is that? It's so, it's insulting to our intelligence. We just work for free, not even that dehumanizing everything and then you're telling us we're indebted to you it's just i just can't get my head around it and there's things like that i just think what okay uh no um so no seat at the world leaders table because you know we see everything's about money our economy's gone we're very low at 99 percent consumer things like that we're buying our hair products from indian people this is this is the problem this is the stuff that we've got to start with um no economy resource exploitation um sterilization um uh, Africa's a medical experimental grounds. These are the things that are happening. Um, so dumping grounds. Uh, there's still wars going on today in the Congo. Yeah. This is in calls from Leopold. He's not no king to me. Sorry, sure. Leopold. Yeah. Um, back in, the, from when he was, I don't, uh, you know, I'm reading the book now, King Leopold's Ghost, and it's just even more like, oh my gosh. Do you know what I mean? So some of the things, is it, is it, should I continue reading these books? But mm. it, it's important that you should because it kind of kind of keeps you kind of regenerating into thinking, yeah, when you start getting a bit lazy, you think, mm, actually. Um, so the misrepresentation in the media, so for example, I remember with the Human Zoo campaign, when we um, shut, the, shut it down, in the papers, they were saying we were brandishing drums and things like that. Brandishing yeah, drums and yeah. we were a mob and yeah. it was just, it was so peaceful. It was like a celebration more than anything else. And you know, at the end of the day, I don't know what they thought. These people just thought we were going to stand outside and go, oh, don't go in there. No, we're going to be like, no, you, no you're not going in there kind of thing. But it was, it, was, it was nice, it was peaceful, but the way they, they did it in the media, surprise, surprise, and they made it out like we were these animals, you know. Dragging people away from the door and things like that. It was never like that. It was, it was really, really, it was, it's nothing like that. Um, the miseducation in schools mm. as well. But another thing with that, I think we've got to take responsibility for that as well. So, like the Alka Buddha revivalist movement, you know, Saturday school, you know, Nubia, um, and Stockwell, with, there are people taking these initiatives and educating their own children. Um, and I think sometimes, yes, we can we can protest to European powers and say, oh yeah, you know, you need to teach our children this and that and blah blah blah. But really, um, it is our responsibility because they're English. They're going to tell it their way. They're English. They're going to talk it in their story. Even though history is history, and they should just tell the truth. But you know, we can't really expect a bit from them. And Jewish people have their um, supplementary schools. Muslim people have their supplementary schools. We have our supplementary schools as well. We just need more of them, and we need to educate. Our people on the street, why it's important to um, be getting that home education as well, because a lot of, you know, we work all the time. Oh, sorry, how do I go? Yeah, we work all the time, um, and we don't really have time for our children and things like that. So, you know, they sit on the Xbox and this and that, and their brain dies, and you know, just get brain dead because no one's really teaching them anything. Mm -hmm. um, Miseducation in the movies, you know, you see um, those, you know, Europeans being Egyptian pharaohs and things like that, picking mm -hmm. the teeth. Um, and then deliberately not promoting movies that show us in our glory, like you know, the Haitian Revolution, mm -hmm. Danny Glover wanted to make a movie on that, and you know, he was shunned and things like that. They keep making these slavery movies. Mm -hmm. The Harriet Tubman's gonna come out now, which is great. That's a good story. I like that story, that show. But it's still like not with you know, it's you know, you know what I mean anyway. But I did watch that Queen and Zinger movie last week. It's really, really good. It's good. So yeah, you can get a, get, watch that, it's really good. So but even with that, I say, are they going to get a DVD of that here? Oh no, it's not allowed because but what? Like that's why is it not allowed? I don't, I don't, I can't understand that. So these are the things. These are examples of present day things, as if we're back in the thirties. You can't sell Queen Zinger in England. It's just, it's just rubbish. So um, 
So European countries still control the parts of Africa and Monsanto, that's an example, like poise, food poisoning. Mons yeah, Monsanto there. Um, another post-traumatic slave syndrome, this is what um, from Dr. Joy Dequai Leary, this is just her, her theory of what we suffer with in present day. So the, the, like I said, this is what gives me my purpose and what motivates me, just not educating children at home. You know, we cannot keep relying on um, external sources, our loss of community, the bleach of the skin and our identities. These are the things that just keep my fuel burning. I just see it every single day. And you can't not see it every single day because we are in England. Um, uh, Stockholm Syndrome, you know, identifying the oppressor and things like that. The fear, um, the fitting in when you go to work. You know, we put, we put on this act at work, and I don't know, but I'm saying, you see people put on an act at work and you think, oh, it's cringy, my gosh, <laughs> it's really cringy. Um, so this is uh, the Stop the Maangamizi We Charge Genocide Ecocide campaign. It's the sister campaign for the uh, African Emancipation Day reparations march this year. And on there, again, it shows the current effects of uh, the African Holocaust. Um, so again, police brutality, you know, the school to prison pipeline, deaths in custody, nutricide, these are things why people need to be involved. This is why African women need to continue um, to be involved, if not get involved. I'm just gonna skip the next slide. Um, so this is last year's March 2015. Um, so here's some pictures here. Uh, by this time, this this time last year, I, I was um, doing secretarial um, type work, you know, promotion, you know, sending emails, inviting organisations, embassies, and that stuff. So that that was that was good to know that. Yeah, I'm kind of like um, it's just nice just being on the inside and just seeing how. It, for me, I look at it as practice for the future for myself. I think. This is a learning curve for me. So if I want to do something in the future, uh, not to be separating or dis disunifying or anything, I will have my experience of um, pushing this movement forward. Because when we say movement, by the way, it's not the the, the the march in itself is not the entire reparations movement. It's only a small segment in in England. Like there's so many more reparations um, organisation and movements out there. So you just got to remember right. that we're not the be all and end all. Like, we're just right. a tiny, tiny. And then to think half of our people, there's 2.5 million of us here, and there's you know even a smaller amount of us you know trying to wake people up. So just got to remember that. Um, also, marching you know isn't a lot of people I think have a um, a, a misinterpreted conception of what marching is. Like you don't march and get food, you don't march and get money. You don't. It's just more like a, a raising awareness, mobilising tool. Because um, we don't have our own media, so that's like one day where thousands of us are together to get told one straight message, and along the way people look and think, "Oh, what's going on there?" And hopefully, you know, join on that, that spreads the word as well. Um, me. More pictures from 2015. That's again last year. Um, also, current work that the, the march is doing, uh, my current work that I'm doing now, uh, the theme for the Reparations March at, uh, is education is preparation for reparations. And like I said, education is the first, the first step. So um, there are um, public workshops, we do you know, public meetings um, to educate and to those who really feel the fire as well, they can contribute. Um, having that self-reliance, self-dependency and self-sufficiency and action learning as well. Here's more pictures from other um, public meetings we've had where we've split groups, we've had like create subcommittee groups who have gone away to do their own segment of work to then just keep spreading, keep spreading, keep spreading. Um, on Saturdays, you know, there's outreach groups going out to different parts of London to promote the march currently now. Um, so yeah, more public meetings. Uh, we also have a public meeting we also have a public media reparations interactive orientation and workshop this Sunday at the Ma at the Mama Art Centre um, in London, uh, Tottenham. On Sunday the 1st of May, so that starts at 3 till 6pm, so write in your diaries, hope to see you. Um, again, so you get to learn a bit more of a breakdown of what reparations is and how we can apply it, um, things like that. Yeah. There's also a petition. The petition, if you go on change.org and type in Stop the Mahan Gamizi, we charge genocide, ecocide. Those are the two main points of the um, petition. So I, I, I just have advise you to go online, read it yourselves thoroughly, get familiar with it, you can decide, you know, um, it is what it is. Everyone has their own, um, their own kind of strategy 
so to say, but we all have the same goal. So even if there's something you might not sort of, um, say 100% agree with, you still know that, mm, well, I want liberation for my people, you want liberation for my people. So we might have different ideologies or different ideas about it, but let's just try and work together, you know, anyway. Um, the ultimate goal, I think, for me personally, I think this is the ultimate goal for me. I don't know if you guys, uh, you all agree. So the Ma'atu Buntaman is like a, I'd say our African super state, so that's where we all live in our, in, our, in our, I wouldn't say dream world, I think, I do have hope we'll get there, you know, where all of us are, you know, liberated and we have our sovereignty and our nationhood, so it's like an African super state where we're self-sufficient, we have our own currency, we have resource control, we have our right to autonomy and self-governance, global recognition, even though we don't, when I say global recognition, because a lot of the time I just, I don't care what other people think, I just care about us as a family kind of right. getting together. I don't really right. care about that, but, um, but when we get that power base together, then we'll be a force to be reckoned with. People can't ignore us kind of thing or dismiss us or start wearing camos and saying Kim Kardashian invented camos and stupid things like that. Um, Economical control. It was Lord Derrick, you know. It was Lord Derrick. No, that, that, that was Lord Derrick. But she talked about a recent thing. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. recent. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I was like, yeah, but it is. This is so cool, yo. And a white woman had me. Camos. Yeah. Oh, this is the 70s. Yeah, because she's yeah. thinking. She's thinking. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's such a. It's just that old moment. I just think that they take these things. And, um,. Things I used to laugh about, about now they're injecting their bombs. They're trying to put suck their lips yeah. in the bottles, and it, it's just, it's just, uh, it just sickens me. It, but um, yeah, yeah, just things like that just worry me because, um, as I said, we're invisible to them. But when they do it, it's all oh, new fashion, new style, new trend, and completely dismiss us. And that's another reason why I'm just let's educate the people quickly. Okay, how can you contribute? Um, well, if you wanted to contribute, for example, with the reparations, upcoming reparations march, um, you can always join the Facebook page, which is the March August, and the march is together, so it's not a mis it's not a, it's not a typo. And you also have the African Emancipation Day Reparations March Facebook page and the Stop Number Angamizi Facebook page. So you can always keep updated, uh, or if you want to assist in any way, like volunteering with um, stewarding or first aiding or uh, anybody that. Uh, has any big car vehicles that can help our elderly and our young children and things like that. You can always look on the petition, change.org, just type in We Charge Genocide. You can just type that in or sort them at Anga Mizi and have a thorough read of that. You can always, any questions or any inquiries, you can always email the marchuk at hotmail.com. And also we have a GoFundMe page as well because it's, you know, self-reliant, self-reliant. Um, so for us African women out there, you know, and men and children, African women in particular, um, we can take things into our own hands, and that's what my main message I say, because um, a lot of people think, oh, you know, they haven't got the confidence to do what they're doing, or they, they think they're not good enough to do something, but you can do it right today if you wanted to. You can start by educating your own children, educating your own children, um, holding study sessions with your families, now, I've, I've tried that. Learning your arguments, so when people try to challenge you, you know, you can just, you know, just, 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 oh, you know what I mean? It's so nice to know, because before, when people used to say things to me, you kind of get this kind of hole in your stomach because you can't articulate what you, what you want to say as a response. Like, for example, if someone said like a racist comment to you, like a, you black this or something, you know, a lot of us will kind of just shut in with this kind of shame or embarrassment. But, oh, God, I've got every art in the book if anyone told me that. <laughs> God. Um, fundraising, education, outreach, going on the street. You can just go on the street. If you wanted to right now, if you've got like a lot of knowledge or anything you want to hand out or books you want to recommend, you can do that right now. Go out on the street, stop a few African people. You can do it. Um, entertainment, create campaigns, give your time to supplementary schools, promote and support black businesses and long-term strategic planning. Other forms of action learning. So if you really feel like, oh, you know what, let me find out who thinks a certain way. You can do surveys for your own personal research. You can attend seminars or conferences. Um, putting into action what you've learned. Um, sorry, I put learn your argument again, but yeah, learn your argument. So do your homework, do your DNA research, do your family research. Just keep, 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 keep researching. Learn to tackle these people that try and come at you. Because if you want to start going out the street, if you feel inspired, you're thinking, yeah, I'm going to go on the street, get some petition get some signals from the petition, you need to be ready for those people that chat rubbish, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm not going to go into the next story. <laughs> but anyway, yes, yeah, so, if you can save the day, please, Monday the 1st of August, if you work, book your day off now, you know, it's over two weeks, so, 
They can't say, oh, it's under two weeks, can't the two <coughs> Well ahead of uh, the, the, the two week bubble. My job is us two week bubble. I put this in from uh, 2nd of August 2015. Whether they refuse it or not, I'm just, I'm just not coming in. So, you know, no, just, seriously. It's not happening. Yeah, so please book it. Please put that day off. You know, I hope to see you all there. Um, thank you for listening. Um, and yeah, Black Power. Ooh. Black Power.